Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. Now today we have our much anticipated part two of our press and our clean and press series and today is the meat of the video and that is part two and that is actually pressing comic books. Now I did mention in the previous video a lot of people like to keep this information very close to the hip. Um, a lot of people have their own little trade secrets to what they do for pressing. This is what I do. It's what works for me. It might not work for everyone. Disclaimer down in the description in case you ruin a book because I must tell you that this was a trial and error process for me and I ruined many books learning how to do this. Hopefully I can prevent that and, or just give you a jumping off point to start off with. So first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go through the supplies that we need for pressing comic books. Now, fair warning, Pressing comic books, not a cheap endeavor. It is a rather large investment to start off with, but you can usually get going for uh, all my supplies. Probably about $400 is what I got started with. So let me show you what I got. First thing is, is that you know, we are starting with our book. That's we, my magazine sign. I'm gonna take that out of there. This is the book that we cleaned yesterday, and we will be pressing today. And this is our DC Comic Presents number 47, the first appearance of He-Man. This is a modern-day grail right here. A lot of people. This is a perfect pressing candidate. When you look at books, you see some of these creases and stuff back here. There's what I like to call uh, good defects and bad defects. These are good defects. These are pretty much just surface creases. Now, if you have a book that's been bent in half... <laughs> you probably aren't going to get those out. Pressing comic books is all about three things. First thing is heat. You need the proper amount of heat. Second thing is you need pressure, where the press comes into play. And the third thing is you need time. You really need patience to be able to do this properly. And you need the right tools. Let's start off with, first thing we have, oh... That's right, latex gloves. Let's suit up. Suit up. All right. Yeah. Next thing is, you're gonna want to have yourselves a nice set of dental picks. Now, why do you want dental picks? Sometimes on the corners of books or, uh, you know, different pages that might get stuck together, you can use dental picks to gently peel back the corners of, you know, pages that are flipped over. Or, you know, if you have a nice corner that's flipped over here, you can gently peel that back. But try not to scratch the book because most of the time these are very, very sharp. So you're going to want yourself a good set of dental picks. You can get away with not having these, but they're only a few bucks on eBay. This, this is the meat of my pressing. You're probably wondering what the heck is going on here. You've never seen this before. Now, a lot of people will, or not a lot of people, but some people will show you techniques around the internet where they put the book in the press and they press it for a few minutes and then they open the press up and they flip it over and then they press the other side. This is going to eliminate that. I have pretty much a developed a one size fits all <laughs> approach to uh, uh, pressing because my time is valuable. I don't want to waste my time. So I go for efficiency and speed and this allows me to get it done very, very fast. The first thing you're gonna need, two steel plates. That is correct, you're gonna need two steel plates. These are 1 8 inch thick steel, nine by 12 in size. Your book's gonna get sandwiched in these bad boys. Uh, adds extra pressure, flat and stiff, and no flipping involved because with the steel plates, it will heat both sides of the book at the same time. So when you get your steel plates in, you're gonna to wanna to sand one side down. This will be the side that's closest to the book because a lot of these will come in with burrs and things like that and nicks. And you're gonna to wanna to sand that down smooth with a fine grit of sandpaper. So you're gonna want two of these. Next up, 
magazine size backboards. You're gonna want at least several packs of these because you're gonna go through them. You're gonna go through these rather fast. Now, a lot of times they'll say online to change these out every time you press a book. I can usually get anywhere from five to 10 books out of them before I feel like I have to change these out unless I am using humidity, which is an advanced technique we will not be touching on in this video, maybe later. The other thing is SRP paper. This is silicone release paper. I buy this by the case from Uline. It costs about 60 bucks for a case, and you get these, in, you get it in giant sheets, and I cut it down to fit the book. Again, a lot of people online will tell you to use Teflon sheets. I don't like Teflon sheets. Teflon sheets, you run, they're textured, so you run the risk of leaving that texture on your book. You're using pressure here, people. You know, and uh, not only that, but if you are using an advanced technique, say with uh, moisture, with humidity, you change these out because you have to press that book several times to get the moisture out of it, or else it's going to ruin the book. And with this, you could just fill this up with moisture, throw it out, put another sheet on. Teflon, you cannot do that because you have to reuse it. So you're going to want a case of that. Last but not least, you want a heat press. It's over there. All right, folks, this is Comic Manager's Heat Press. Nothing fancy. You really do not need anything fancy when you start out with. You can pick these up for anywhere from $1 to $200 on eBay. Very, very cheap. You can even find them a lot of times refurbished from the manufacturer, just as good as new. All right, and actually you can see mine's been sitting here a while. I got some dust on it. Sorry, that's a little embarrassing. <laughs> All right. But the things you do want to look for when you are purchasing a heat press is you want to make sure you have your bottom plate large enough to support your comic book. So make sure you know how big you're buying. Next thing is uh, all heat presses will be digital. So you want to make sure that you buy a digital heat press uh, so that way you can control your temperature and your time. Next thing is, is that there are two types of heat presses. You have clamshell, which is what this is. Or you have swing arm, which is literally an arm that swings the top plate back and forth. Doesn't matter which one you buy. But what you do want to look for, this knob right here, dead center of your plate. A lot of cheaper heat presses take this pressure knob and they put it back here. Where are you pressing your book? You're pressing your book here. So you want the maximum amount of pressure here, not back here. Never, never, never buy one with an adjustment knob back here. This will actually lower, uh, adjust, uh, raise and lower your top plate. And the other thing is, is that you do not want an auto open heat press. I have seen these. I've actually owned one before when I was actually making t-shirts just for the fun of it. And I had one that would pop itself open. Great for making t-shirts because you don't want the t-shirt to melt the, the heat transfer vinyl. But on your book, you need to keep constant pressure once this thing is in here. Whew. Okay. Now, next thing. When you buy heat presses, they always have this rubber pad in here. Again, great for pressing t-shirts. You are not pressing t-shirts. Rip that thing off. That's right. Get rid of it. Rip that off. Now you are achieving maximum amount of pressure. So, I mean, this thing has a give to it. You know, what are you, you going to do with that? You're just going to push the book into the rubber pad. No, get rid of it. Uh, you will have a lot of glue and crap up here, though. I took a putty knife and just scraped it off to make it nice and smooth. All right. Back to the table. Those are the supplies you're going to need when you press a comic book. Now, when you press a comic book this style, you're pretty much actually almost any style of comic book that you're going to press, you are going to make essentially a sandwich. Now, this pressing technique will work for almost any comic book out there. What it will not work with is that they, it does not work with cardstock books. No pressing technique will work with cardstock books. I don't care if you send it to CGC to press it, they cannot do cardstock books. The next thing is this will not work with perfect bound or what they call square bound or 64 page books. That is a completely different pressing technique altogether. I may touch on that later in an advanced uh, pressing video. 
if I have interest in it, sweet, leave me comments down below. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing advanced pressing techniques. So, what are we gonna start out with? Here is our basic sandwich. You have steel plate. Next, you are going to put a magazine size backboard on there. Beautiful, right? Silicone release paper, nice and smooth. Your book will not stick or melt to this. That is our third layer in our comic book sandwich. Now, next up, we have our book. Now you're going to take your book and you are going to find the middle page at the staples. You wanna find your staples. And you're going to take another piece of, mag or of magazine size backboard and you are going to press it right up against the staples in the middle there. Now this is going to do two things. First thing is it's going to protect your front and back cover so it doesn't leave a staple impression on the front and back. And the next thing it's going to do is it is going to give your spine depth like it should. If you press without this, it is going to make this a skinny little piece of paper in the back here that just does not look right. You do not want to do that. So that is going to go on to your silicone release paper. Beautiful. And now we are going to complete our sandwich. Silicone release paper on top. I do put the shiny side towards the book it's smoother. That's actually the only reason. Because if you have dust or little particles, you will get divots in your covers. So you really want to make sure these things are nice and clean. And the last thing is your top steel plate. I don't know if I mentioned, but I bought these steel plates off of eBay. Uh, they cost 10 bucks a piece, $10 shipping. Totally worth the investment. And now, into our press. All right, our sandwich is now relocated to the press. Now, normally I build my sandwich directly in the press. I just built it on the table this time for illustration purposes so you guys can see what I'm doing. It was easier that way. But to transfer it from there to here and carry these giant heavy steel plates is actually a little pain. So I usually just build it right in here. Once it's in there, we'll close it up. All right, and you use your tension knob to make sure you have the maximum amount of tension going on this because like I said, three things go into play when pressing a comic book. Heat, pressure, time. Two different versions of time. All right, so now my trade secrets, the settings that I use to press the comic book. <clears throat> like I said, a lot of people, they will, uh, Turn the heat press on, let it come to temperature, close this down for like three or four minutes, open it up, flip the book over. Like I said, I, I have kind of developed my own one size fits all, set it and forget it <laughs> technique of pressing. So yesterday I was channeling Bob Ross, today I'm channeling Ron Popeil. Here we go. All right, so what I do is I put my sandwich in here. I have already preset my temperatures and everything. <clears throat> I set my temperature to 165 degrees. That is correct, 165. Now this is just the temperature that I use. A lot of tutorials out there, they'll fluctu fluctuate up and down depending on the type of book that you are using, Silver Age, Modern Age, meh, meh, meh. And uh, you know, I mean, everything has its merits, but like I said, this is what I have figured out works for me. 165. I set the time to 500 seconds. That is about 8.3 minutes. Now, I do not touch the book. I leave it in here. This is going to be a loud beep, guys. I turn it on. It comes to temperature with the book in there. And I just let it go. Now, depending on the book, I may increase the time to about 600 seconds. Uh... 
But that really, that's going to be hit or miss. I have actually glued front covers <laughs> to the inside pages because I have left books in there too long. But that usually is some of the older books that I've done that to. Uh, usually 500 seconds, anywhere from, from eight and a half to say nine minutes is usually very safe for this technique. I have not run into an issue, knock on wood, doing that this way. All right. Um, now, once your book is done, you flip the power off and you leave it sit. Now, a lot of people don't realize this. This book needs to stay in that press 24 hours. That is correct. You do not touch this for a full day. You come back tomorrow and you open it up and you take your book out and you enjoy the glory that is on the cover now. Uh, now, if you do have stubborn stain or stubborn uh, wrinkles or creases or whatever, don't be afraid to throw it back in here for a second go. I have thrown books back in for at least two, maybe three times for a few of them to work out some stuff. Now, I did mention that there are books this does not work on. A couple books that this will work on that you may be surprised with is that uh, autographed books seem to have no problems in the press. Uh, I haven't had an issue with any type of autograph in the books or in the press. I've done everything from ballpoint to Sharpies. So the other thing is glow-in-the-dark books. Awesome in the press. It usually rejuvenates older glow-in-the-dark, <laughs> which is really cool. Okay, so there we go. That's that. Um, within 24 hours, we were pulling out a beautiful book. Now, I was thinking about waiting for the full 24 hours and shooting the end of this video, coming back tomorrow and showing you guys it. I am way too impatient to put or for that. So I'm going to put up the video now. And if you guys want to see the final results, stop by my Instagram on Saturday and anytime after that to see the results. I'll post them up there. Uh, yeah, that's that. Back to the table. All right, guys. So that's it. Uh, there are my techniques for cleaning and pressing comic books. You know, like I said, though, it's going to be trial and error. You guys are going to do your own thing out there. But I'm hoping this is a good jumping off point uh, for everybody to try it out for themselves. It's really, it's not all that difficult. Um, but it is a journey. It really, really is. I mean, it took me, I don't know, six, seven months to actually just get this uh, going. But once it's up and running, it really, really is a fun thing to do. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, what books, you know, what constitutes a book that could be pressed? Um, and, you know, uh, as a rule of thumb, I usually don't try. I try not to press anything under 10 bucks worth under $10 in value just because, you know, like I said, my time is valuable. Um, and if you could only do one book a day, I would rather press a, uh, you know, a DC Comics Presents rather than a, you know, Wildcats number one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying out there. All right. So anyway, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing to my channel members. Your names are scrolling right now with a huge thank you to my channel subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And, and if you guys do like this video, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if there's enough interest, I will do a part three, which shows advanced pressing techniques. I'll show you how to do... Uh, Perfect Bound Books, I'll show you how to make a humidity chamber, I'll show you how to use tack irons, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed, hit that right there. Right there, it's so easy to do. And don't forget to hit that bell, you know, and give me a thumbs up just for the fun of it. Anyway, thanks guys. Take it easy.